This is Strictly Business, presented by the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Sponsored in part by the Law Offices of Young Wooldridge, San Joaquin Community Hospital, morning. Welcome to Strictly Business, a partnership of the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce and TBC Media. Strictly Business is sponsored by San Joaquin Community Hospital and Young Woldridge LLP. I'm Shauna Shearson, Vice President of Kern School's Federal Credit Union and Chair of the Chamber's Business Education and Enhancement Committee. Today's webinar on the topic of being a better nonprofit board member and how to build a great nonprofit board will be taught by Angie Paquette from Bakersfield College. And Angie has served as the Alumni and Donor Relationship Manager for Bakersfield College mm -hmm. and the College's Foundation. Angie serves on many nonprofit boards and committees and is also an active volunteer in our community, so welcome. Thank now before Angie begins, I wanna let our viewers know that this is interactive. Please tweet or post your questions to the Chamber's Facebook page using the hashtag Strictly Biz Baco, and we'll pose your questions throughout our session today. So good morning, Angie. Good morning, how are you? I'm great, how are you? I am well. Fantastic, will you tell us a little bit about yourself and your experience with boards? Sure, I'd be happy to. Actually, my experience with boards just kind of evolved and I'm not really sure where it all began, but most recently I sit on several different boards. I sit on a board called the Kern Leadership Alliance, KLA for short. KLA is a nonprofit faith-based organization where community leaders and advocates come together and we talk about how we can um, impact our community using faith-based resources. Great. So that's one of the boards. I also sit on the um, Kern Alliance Against Family Violence and the Bakersfield Homeless Center Board. I love both of those boards. Lewis Gill, who's the executive director, is phenomenal, and my relationship with those boards has just grown um, tremendously. I really enjoy that. And then I also sit on the Bakersfield West Rotary Board. I'm a West Rotary member. I've been on their board for about seven years, and I'm excited because I will be the incoming president next year. Oh, fantastic. So, Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. You have a lot of expertise in this area, and particularly in your <laughs> role with the college. I do, because I also participate on that, on the foundation board um, for Bakersfield College as well in my role as the, um, in the foundation. Well, that's outstanding. I serve on a couple of boards related to the credit union industry and have been on committees in the council with the chamber. Sure. So I'm really interested in finding out more about our topic today. Yeah, um, I think we could start with how to build a board. So from the perspective sure. of the nonprofit, how do you, how do you put it together? Sure. What best practices and tips do you have? Well, I think that when you're looking at building a board, it's a lot like um, being a matchmaker for, for people. You know, you've got this board and it's one entity, let's call it the groom, and you've got a bride that you're looking to match it with. And so it's about becoming a matchmaker with your prospects out there. So I think one of the first things that I would talk about is the prospect to project match. So every board has goes through its seasons of projects, right? So you have a project that might be about developing a board um, initially. Maybe it's a brand new board and you've got to develop this visionary energized group that just wants to build the board and build the organization. At other seasons in the board, you might be working on some sort of political advocacy. Maybe you're working on a bond issue or you're working on some other political entity. And then there are also seasons for doing fundraising. So I think it's really important that we figure out what season we are in and really try to match prospective board members with the projects that we're looking at on the near horizon. That's, That's a great point to yeah. realize where you are as an organization and what needs you have for the next step. Exactly. So for example, with the homeless center, it, at the homeless center, we really are in a season and it's pretty a pretty long season of fundraising. So it's really important that the board members that join us are really not only skilled at fundraising, but really find it a passion because for many of the board members, this is in addition to their regular job. Right. So they have to have enough passion about wanting to serve that, not only that organization, but serve in the capacity of fundraising that they're willing to do it outside the boundaries of their workday. That's an important thing. 
Bakersfield College right now, we are um, really trying to engage the community um, broadly because we're trying to educate the community on what's happening up at Bakersfield College and ways that they can get involved with our foundation. So our focus for our projects is probably a little bit different right now than what it would be, for example, with the Homeless Center. Okay, great. So, yeah. Good tips. So that's one thing. I'm going to pull this out of my ear because it's kind of falling out. Sorry. I'll just let that dangle for a second. No problem. Um, okay. So then the next thing that I would talk about with board members in terms of building them is to, I would gel a good job description. So I think a lot of times with boards, we forget to really look at the board as an actual position, almost like an employee. So if I'm applying for a new job, I'm going to expect to see a job description that I can really mull over and think about for several days before I might want to apply for that job. And it's going to clearly outline the expectations that my employer or prospective employer would have for me. I think a lot of times with boards, we have a tendency to just want to um, walk over, find somebody that's energized, that's got a great reputation in town, sit down over a, you know, a good bowl of soup at Luigi's and say, hey, how would you like to be on our board? But I really think that we need to go deeper than that. That's a great point. And for the volunteer, it's more than just saying, oh, I love this organization. Yeah, exactly. I want to be a part of it. But looking at specifically what are the skills and tasks that are going to be involved. Exactly. And the time as well. And the time, I think the time is critical. So when I was approached about joining the Homeless Center Board, for example, I had a wonderful lunch with Lewis Gill, the director, and with Jeff Green, who's the um, board president, basically. And they chatted with me and brought materials for me, including copies of their budget and some other pieces, so that when I left the initial meeting, it wasn't with, and are you ready to sign on the dotted line? It was, I had materials to kind of really explore the organization before I committed. Okay, great. Yeah. All right, what other tips do you have for building your board? Well, this is one that I really like. So I think you need to get down dirty and diversify. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> down dirty and diversify. Well, a lot of times in our community, we instantaneously go diversity uh, equates ethnicity. Mm. And, and it does. I mean, let's be realistic. It's one way. It's one way mm -hmm. of diversifying a board. But again, you know, I think that um, understanding that for different seasons of the board and different projects that we're going to be working on, we need to be able to reach various different constituents within our community. So I think finding a good balance of not just um, ethnic representation, but perhaps faith-based representation, so it's not just one faith base, but it's a multitude of them. Gender equity, I think, is really a good thing. You know, men and women bring different perspectives to an issue or even to a solution. And I think making sure that, that we've done that. I think having um, some diversity with age is really important. Um, and I think also socioeconomics. So a lot of times boards, and rightfully so, we tend to reach into a certain economic band within the community that has the wherewithal to financially contribute to our organization. Mm -hmm. And there's a purpose and a reason for that, but I think that it also behooves us to have at least a little bit of representation from groups that can't necessarily participate on an economic level, but bring other resources and other contacts to the table. That's a really good, good point. And having so much diversity of opinion can make things not as smooth, but it certainly brings a lot of value to the conversation and makes sure that all points yeah. are considered um, and things don't just get railroaded over and, and move on without exactly. considering another point of view. Right. So I think that's a really good point. And sometimes I think it's those voices like from the, the um, different uh, economic bands that I think really do bring that voice of reason going, you know, if you come at my community with this approach, we might find it slightly offensive. So if you change the approach just a little bit, it will help us digest your message a little bit better. I think that's really an important thing. Okay, great. So, well, yeah. if you get all those different viewpoints represented, then how do you get them to be willing to share their view? Oh, uh, that has to do with how we manage the board meeting itself. So um, although this is about recruiting a board member or a, a board member, I think one way of activating or getting people to really um, feel confident in expressing their opinion within 
a meeting is to make sure that we're facilitating the meeting and not just letting the meeting evolve organically. I think it's really the responsibility of the board president and the CEO of the organization to make sure that, that all meetings are facilitated, which means that we're being mindful of balance in conversation during the meeting and not just letting it evolve organically because when conversations evolve organically, some voices become, I call them louder, but stronger or more repetitive, and it kind of edges out the quieter voice, and sometimes it's the quieter voice that has the most meaningful contributions. Wow, so that takes talent. Yeah, <laughs> it takes talent. And a lot of intention. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So one of the things that I would say is let your board members do the talking when you're recruiting. So going back to my story about how I was recruited for the Homeless Center and the um, Alliance Against Family Violence, I really appreciated the fact that it was both Lewis Gill, the director of the um, Alliance, along with Jeff Green who um, from Grimway, who actually is our board president, both gentlemen met with me. And really, for the most part, Lewis let Jeff take the lead. So it was one volunteer board member speaking to a prospective um, additional board member going, this is why I'm passionate. This is why I'm willing to give up not only precious work time, but I'm willing to give up my personal time. And it was really Jeff's voice that I heard loud and clear. I already was aware of the wonderful work that Lewis was doing, but I really needed Jeff's voice to speak to my heart. What better than to have a testimonial from someone who's actually doing and done the job that you're being asked to do exactly. instead of an outsider's perspective. So, yeah. Exactly. Great advice. Exactly. Yeah. Good. So I think the last piece that I would um, uh, want to share with people is that you really are looking for a balance when you're trying to recruit board members. You're looking for a balance, and I call it the head, the hand, and the heart. Actually, it's not mine. I had heard it somewhere along the line. But the head, the heart basically is what we're all looking for. We're looking for um, somebody who's passionate about the mission of the organization. And sometimes, like in my case, I was familiar with the homeless center. When I was an elementary school principal, the children from the homeless center went to the school that I was an administrator for. But I really didn't know everything about the homeless center that I needed to. But what Jeff knew is that I'd had enough experience with the organization that I had a passion. So my heart was already there. I think the other thing is, is that the head, we recognize the skill set of every board member. So when I'm looking for prospective board members, I want to know basically what are your skill sets. Your skill sets are different than my skill sets, which are different than Jeff's skill sets. We're not just talking about who has you know, legal knowledge and who has the ability to access people in agriculture, for example, but it, it could be I'm skilled at doing the behind the scenes work for an event and you're skilled at the money making visionary aspect of it. So being mindful of that. And then the last piece is really, um, it's about the heart and I'm gonna look at this, or the hands rather, and it's about really who's willing to roll up their sleeves and get involved. And I think this is a really important piece. Frequently, board members are invited to become members of boards, but they just want to show up for a monthly or a quarterly meeting, and they don't want to deal with it again until next the next meeting. And really, when we're looking for prospective board members, it's critical that we're looking for people that are willing to roll up their sleeves and sometimes be there on a Saturday. Wow, that's great and really good point. Um, what When you do find a candidate that you think you might be interested mm -hmm. in, do you have any tips on how to go about approaching that subject? I know you talked about the lunch, but is there, are there any other ways to feel people out or things that you shouldn't do when you want to approach someone to potentially be on your board? So I think one of the things that's really important is I don't think that the, the onus of building the board really should be just the responsibility or just the mission of the CEO or the president. I really think it needs to be a collaborative process. So I really like what Tom Gelder has done with Bakersfield College. Bakersfield College Foundation right now, we are looking to fill in a couple of board seats. And Tom has opened it up to all of our current board members to get their input. So we've had uh, lists that have been culled that have brought together, and then we've got a subcommittee that sits down and kind of talks about not only that person's skill set, but how they might fit into the context of the group. It's kind of the same thing with the homeless center. Um, 
when when Jeff and Lewis are going around trying to find prospective board members, they have a, a functioning, well-oiled, very tightly knit board already. So to bring in another personality into that group really takes not just one person going, I like this person, but it takes all of us going as a group, yep, we're ready to wrap that new person in. Great. Are there any things that you shouldn't do or sh should avoid in that process of recruitment? Actually, I think that one of the things that you should avoid is being trigger happy. Mm -hmm. So I think that sometimes we hear, you know, such and such um, in the community is involved in a couple of boards and I like their personality and they bring a lot of financial resources and I'm having uh, a glass of wine with them on Friday and during the course of the thing they say, hey, would you like to join our board? And initiating an invitation without really vetting out the process is kind of dangerous because people will commit in a moment and say, sure, I'll be on your board, but, they, but because you haven't gone through the process of really educating them, really feeling them out, making sure that they understand the job description, so to speak, then you wind up with kind of a lame duck board member. So I think being trigger happy is one thing they really should not do. It all sounds like a lot of work, <laughs> but I know how important it is to do that work on the front end to set yourself and your board up for success yeah. when, when all the people and pieces are in place. Yes. You talked about really wanting to make sure that you have people that are willing to roll up their sleeves and yeah. do the work instead of just attending a board meeting and you know, giving a, a few tips and, and heading out and just being right. aware of what's happening with the organization. Right. How... Have you ever predicted wrong <laughs> or, or seen that where it looked like somebody was going to come in and be really engaged? And, yeah. Or are, are there some ways to predict that, yeah, they, they're, we can tell um, that they're going to be willing to roll up their sleeves? Well, I think this is probably a place where I could kind of tell on myself maybe. So um, I, have, I was invited to take a particular position on the Rotary, the West Rotary Board um, last year actually. And because I knew that I was going to continue to want to be involved with the, the group, the position that was offered to me probably wasn't one that I was well equipped to take on. It was one that um, involved an area that I really didn't have a, not a lot of personal knowledge in, nor a lot of experience in it, but I wanted to be on the board because I'd served on the board for seven years. And so I agreed because I was approached without a job description. I was just asked, hey, will you take this on? I agreed to do it in the moment. And true confessions, I really didn't do a very good job at that role last year for our board. I really didn't. And so this year, as I'm preparing to build my board for next year, I'm really trying to be very aware of people's individual personal passions. So the role that I had last year, I didn't have enough passion for that role. But the person that I've talked to and vetted out for taking that role in my year has a deep and abiding passion in that area. So I know that it'll be fulfilled. Fantastic. I know on one of the boards, boards uh, for which I serve, we, we have seen, and it's happened to me, where we started out the year thinking, yes, I have the time, I have the commitment, and then for whatever reason, work right. issues, health issues, personal right. issues have come up and right. sucked some of that time that we thought we would have. Right. Um, but the good thing about this particular board, we've all been right. able to step up and, and fill in, and so right. luckily that hasn't happened to multiple people at the same right. time. Um, but I can see from the perspective right. of the organization that right. you know, it's concerned to try to figure out how to, to keep everybody um, really keeping their eye on the vision and, it and is. Uh, doing what they can at any moment. Which I think really talks to the development of board members. So it's one thing to recruit them. It's another thing to develop them. And I think that there are certain things that have to be put in place to develop somebody from just a board member into an active advocate for the organization. Okay, great. Well, I think it's about time for us to take a break. And when we get back, we will be talking about more about that development of a, a board member into an active advocate. We'll talk okay. a little bit more about meetings and, um, and then also how to get board members into the inner circle where they can really feel the connection and meaning in the work, which is so important to keep them engaged. They have to remember why they cared to begin with. Exactly. But, okay. Great. And we will return right after the break. <laughs> 